Hi, I'm Zach, and I'm here today at Vasquez Rocks to take a look at the new Blackmagic camera app that was just released for the iPhone. We're going to take a look at some examples of this app compared to Apple's own internal camera app and some of the other third-party apps that we could find on the App Store. So, let's get to it. The third-party camera applications that we're going to be looking at are the Blackmagic camera app, the Filmic Legacy app, the Filmic Pro app, Mavis's Pro camera app, and Beast Cam. We have Apple H265 with a data rate of 24 megabits per second, Blackmagic Cam with an H265 at 36.57 megabits per second, Filmic Legacy H265 151 megabits per second, Filmic Pro H265 151 megabits per second, Mavis Pro Camera H265 28 megabits per second, and Beast Cam at 134 megabits per second. And here again are all those shots again just shortened up next to each other. Now, let's look at a 4X zoom of Apple, the Blackmagic Cam 4X, the Filmic Legacy app, Filmic Pro, Mavis Pro Camera, and Beast Cam. Also, because Apple's app has very few settings that you can actually adjust, it's constantly trying to make the best picture that it thinks is possible. For that reason, you can see a little bit of difference up in the sky. While some of these apps look like they're framed slightly different, this was on a locked off tripod shot. It seems that some apps crop a little differently coming off of the sensor. Here's a zoom in of the Apple at 4X, Blackmagic Cam, the Filmic Legacy, Filmic Pro, Beast Cam, and Mavis. So after these examples, we can see that most of these apps are producing the same level of detail and definition. Now I kind of want to focus on the Apple app, Filmic Pro, and of course, Blackmagic's new camera app. So in this example, we're going to have some movement coming off of this bush and the detail levels in this bush play real havoc with any kind of compression. And this was the Apple. And here is Blackmagic Cam coming off the same bush and having the same up motion. Here's a 2x zoom of the Apple on the bush. And we can see a little bit more detail in there. As we go to the Blackmagic Cam, it looks a little softer. I believe that Apple is doing a little bit more of a sharpening post-process to its image. Here's a tilt up with the Apple. Blackmagic cams. And Filmic Pro. And again, here's all three of these shots cut next to each other. Some of the color differences that we're seeing are just white balance issues that can be fixed in post. We can see the detail represented in each is fairly close. And there we can see some of the sharpening I believe that Apple is applying to their imaging. I believe that Apple is adding a post-process sharpening filter to their images. Again, they're trying to make their images work coming off of the camera. They're not expecting the consumer to do a lot in post with their footage. So these were all the applications that we've been using. Let's take a look at some of their UI. So all five of these interfaces are fairly similar. You're going to have a lot of the same selections in each one of these apps. But let's concentrate on the Blackmagic app. In here, we're going to have our lens selection, and we can select between 13, 24, and the 77 millimeter and front facing camera. We can move over to the frames per second and adjust that up to 60 and down to 24. Next, we have the shutter, and right now it's set to the angle measurement, and we can adjust that. Now, because I don't have an ND filter on, it's setting to 2.7. We have the ISO setting, which the lowest is 57, and we have our white balance. And in here, we can select daylight, incandescent, flash, shadow, and cloud. We can also select auto. 
Once we have our white balance, we can lock that. Next, we can bring up the microphones. So we get a bigger display of the audio coming in. And we have a histogram in the lower left. And at the bottom, we have the amount of space on our phone and record time. Some of the other features we have off to the right is zebra striping. And we can set the percentage on that zebra striping. We have focus peaking. We have grid lines and a lot of selections here, including a center dot. So it's a little less obtrusive. Next, we have mat guides. And here we can select all the different aspect ratios to get a guide for adding mats later. We also have a crop guide. We have false colors. And the last, we can select a LUT. And this LUT is for preview only. It will not record to your file, but it's great so that you can get proper exposure for a working LUT that you have in your workflow. Next, we have focusing. We can take auto off and control that with the slider. We have an exposure wheel. Inside settings, we can go to record formats and you can see we have anything from ProRes 444 to the H.264. Under camera, we can go to shutter settings and set the measurement. And here we can see we're at shutter speed or we can set the angle and get at degrees. Under audio formatting, we select stereo and go all the way up to a four channel record. And there you can see there are four available channels. So my opinion on the software as I've been using it, I find that the Blackmagic has a very good intuitive interface that's easy to get to and lock off the features that I need. I can get to the shutter speed and set my angle and lock that angle. I can get to the white balance, set my white balance and lock that white balance. Another great feature is the slate feature. We can enter in a bunch of information in there to have that metadata stored with the shot so that when we get into the edit bay, we have that information at our disposal. I find that the Apple's built-in camera app is just way too limited. We don't have any selection in terms of shutter speeds. We just have an exposure wheel. We have a ProRes selection, but that's about it in terms of higher quality. It's great for in the moment, gotta grab a shot. One of the other great features that I'm finding with the Blackmagic camera app is that it has a stabilization mode, which all the other apps have too, but it has the extreme mode. And the extreme mode is giving me a very good smooth image and I think it's a little bit better than what I'm seeing with the action cam through Apple which does degrade it to 2.7k. When I'm dealing with the Filmic Legacy app it has a cinema plus stabilization and while it does smooth out left and right positions to make it feel more like a tripod head pan and tilt it introduces so much lag between what you're actually filming and the preview on the screen that it's very difficult to actually use it practically. The stabilize off on the 24 millimeter wide lens. Let's switch that on and you can see how much more smooth that is. And it's actually pretty amazing how much of the image it's not cropping to get us to this level of stabilization. Again, here's a 70 millimeter lens that I am hand holding to show how well this stabilize in the extreme setting does. Again, this shot here is all handheld, just pan across the rock face. And I'm gonna actually put a little bit of a tilt into this, give it some more motion. Sometimes it's good to stress these stabilizations to see if they can handle movements in different directions. And in this shot, I'm just standing up with the phone and tilting down, trying to get kind of a jib arm type look. It's important to remember that all these examples that we just viewed have been viewed through the web. And there's another level of compression that's been applied on top of these videos. It becomes a lot harder to see a lot of the differences with that extra level of compression. So where you're really gonna see the difference between these apps, codecs, and different formats is in the edit bay. When you go to try to pull color, or a key from certain elements in your background, foreground, that's where you're gonna see a level of detail on the edging that ProRes or higher data rate codecs are gonna give you a little bit more latitude in the edit bay. In terms of your viewer on the end of the experience, these formats really get compressed down to where the differences aren't really seen. It's important when you're talking about codecs and formats for you to understand your own production needs. Every production is gonna require something different. 
It's also good to know the limitations of what the iPhone can do with those higher formats. While they can record ProRes 444, the space on your iPhone is going to fill up very quickly. It's also going to produce a lot of heat within the iPhone. And when the iPhone produces a lot of heat, the first thing it's gonna do is dim your screen. And while you're filming outside, when that screen dims, it's gonna be very hard to continue to shoot. If you do continue to shoot, the camera is gonna overheat to the point that it will just shut down. And it will give you a warning that it needs to cool off before you can boot the camera back up. And that is something that you don't wanna happen if you're dealing with actors or other scene elements that are timely. Shooting B-roll or doing pickups is a great use of the iPhone's ProRes features to give you the quality to match in with other higher end cameras that are designed to shoot these large formats for extended periods of time. And the Blackmagic app is free, so it's easy to download, try, and decide for yourself whether it's going to fit your production style. So at the end of the day, the Blackmagic camera app is gonna be the app I use for recording on the iPhone. I'd be curious down in the comments if you could leave your experiences with different third-party apps that you use on the iPhone. And if you like this review, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next review.